lock the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. The eyes will pass it. Uh, no! Lock the doors. Too late. No way. Not on. Deputy Speaker. I acknowledge the Ngunnawal and Ngambri peoples who are the traditional custodians of the Canberra area and pay respects to their elders past and present of all Australians Indigenous peoples. Almighty God, we humbly beseech thee to vouchsafe thy blessing upon this parliament, direct and prosper our deliberation to the advancement of thy glory and the true welfare of the people of Australia. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The member for North Sydney is seeking the call. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I seek leave to move a motion. Is leave granted? Leave is not granted. Oh, that's a little disappointing. I move that so much of the standing and session orders be suspended as would prevent the member for North Sydney from moving the. Will, will you shut up? Just listen. The Assistant Treasurer is not assisting. The member for North Sydney has the call. I think I move that so much of the standing and session orders be suspended as would prevent the member for North Sydney from moving the following motion forthwith. That the resolution of the House of Representatives of 8 May 2012 regarding the management of proceedings in respect of Appropriation Bill No. 1, 2012-2013, Appropriation Bill No. 2, 2012-2013, Appropriation Parliamentary Departments Bill 2012-2013, Appropriation Bill No. 5, 2011-2012, and Appropriation Bill No. 6, 2011-2012, be rescinded to allow the House to properly consider the proposal contained in Appropriation Bill No. 2 to increase the Commonwealth debt ceiling from $250 billion the to $300 billion. Stop covering up. His seat. Stop. The member for North Sydney will resume his seat. When he's asked to resume his seat, he should do so. The Leader of the House has the call. Yes, Madam Deputy Speaker, I would ask that the member withdraw that last comment. The Leader of the House will resume Madam, Madam De his— the, manage, the member for North Sydney does not have the call. He will resume his seat. The Leader of the House. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Shadow Treasurer is alleging that the budget papers are somehow not transparent. They are. They are. They are. And he said— and, and, and he indeed said in The Australian— I read that he supported this measure. The manager, the and leader of the house, will resume his seat. The manager of opposition business does not have the call. The leader of the house will resume his seat. But be no longer heard. The question is that the member be no longer heard. All of those of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, no. Aye. Think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
order. Lock the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. The eyes will pass it. Uh, no! Lock the doors. Too late. No way. Not on. Out. Out. <laughs> I did actually call him back in because the doors had locked. Sorry. No, I actually. Sorry. Yeah, the government whip doesn't have the authority. I actually said he should return to the chamber because the doors had been locked and he was actually uh, in the chamber when I said lock the doors. So, in accordance with the rules, I had asked him to stay in the chamber as the doors had been locked. And. And I think that is the right way to proceed. The member for North Sydney, on a point Madam, of order. Madam Deputy Speaker, just to clarify, as we said that we would not accept the vote of the member for DeBell, when we realised— The member for North Sydney does not right have the me. call. The, the member for North Sydney, it is not for the opposition or the government to accept a member's vote. We need to clarify this. It is for the parliament to accept a member's vote. The member for North Sydney. The member for North Sydney. The coalition has said it would not accept the, the vote of the member for Dobell. And if the member for Dobell entered the house and voted with us, we would have someone leave the chamber. Now, to provide clarity, when we became aware that the member for Dobell was sitting on our side, 
Oh, that's no. why, that's, that is why, that is why the leader of the opposition and the, the leader of the, the manager of opposition business attempted to leave the house on that. The note. member for now, North the Sydney. Member, the, obviously, the member for North Sydney has made his point. We are in the middle of a division. The issue still remains that when the the, the call for the doors to be locked has been made, those in the chamber must be counted in the vote. I understand the point the member for North Sydney is making, but the, there is no ability for the parliament to exclude a member's vote. The member for Groom is seeking the call. I actually would like now, before that, to put the question. The question is that the member be no longer heard. All of those of that opinion will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left. I appoint the members for Shortland and Chifley tell us for the eyes, and the members for Barker and Parks tell us for the nose. The member for Groom. You are outside. The, you are classed as outside the chamber if you are past the advisers' box. The member, the the the, the, le the leader of the opposition was on the floor at the time. That's the chamber. We will now proceed with the vote. I just did. He was in here. He cannot leave.
doesn't sound good. The result of the division is I 66, no 72. The question is therefore negated. The member for North Sydney's time has expired. Is the motion the member for Thank Gold you, Madam Sen Deputy Speaker? Madam Deputy Speaker, this treasurer, this treasurer is addicted to debt. Member for Goldstein will refer to the motion before the chair. I am, Madam Deputy. Madam Deputy Speaker, debt is a dirty word for this government, a the word never to be mentioned. Goldstein will refer to the motion before the chair. Madam Deputy Speaker, the government. The, we need to suspend standing oh, orders, Madam Deputy Goldstein. Speaker, because this government, this government is ashamed and embarrassed. Ashamed and embarrassed with the cover-up that is the taking leader place with of this the debt. Member of Goldstein will resume his seat. The Leader of the House.
Deputy Speaker, the member must argue why standing orders should be suspended. That is the motion that is before the chair, and that is what the member for Goldstein must refer to. The Leader to. of the House will resume his seat. The member for Goldstein must refer to the motion before the chair. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, the reason that the standing orders must be suspended, very important reason that this, they must be suspended, is because this government knows that a proper debate about debt would expose the extent of its profligacy. The government, the, the government has gagged debate. We've seen it again already. The way this government has get the gag debate about debt exposes both its shame and its shamelessness. It is a shame because it doesn't want the public to know, and it is shameless that it doesn't care. It doesn't care about the dead the weight of debt that will this resume his government seat. is putting. The member for Goldstein will resume his seat. The Leader of the House. Mr Deputy Speaker, the member is going to the substance of the motion that he is attempting to suspend standing orders for to debate. The member must stick the to leader, the suspension of standing orders that the is before of the, House the chair. The leader will resume his seat. The member for Goldstein has the call. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Madam Deputy Speaker, the need to suspend standing orders is quite clear when you look at the look at the problem that we are addressing with this motion. Madam Deputy Speaker, it is a government quite incapable of living within its means. It is still borrowing a hundred million dollars a day and this is why seat. the Leader of the House on a point of order. I move that the member be no longer heard. The question is the question is that the member be no longer heard. All of those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes. They don't have to. I heard some yeses, but there's actually no requirement. There's a requirement for the noes for a division. Read your standing orders. I can hear e, even Fred.
Lock the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. The ayes will pass to the right of the chairs, the noes to the left. I point the members for Shorten and Chifley as tellers for the ayes, and the members for Barker and Parks tellers for the noes.
morning. The result of the division is ayes 66, noes 72. The question is therefore negated. The time for the debate on this motion has expired. Can I actually just um, record my thanks and appreciation to the parliament for their good humour in what has been a trying issue? While I'm uh, trying to assure the clerks I'm not trying to make it into reps practice, I seem to be every day, so I want to thank everyone for their help in these matters. Thank you. The member for Flinders is seeking the call. I do. Uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, I move that so much of standing and sessional orders be suspended as would prevent the member for Flinders from moving the following motion forthwith. That this House requires the Minister for Climate Change and Energy Efficiency to come into the Parliament to tell the truth and to correct his statement that on-road fuel costs are not increasing under the carbon price and, in fact, off-road fuel costs will decrease. Excise is being cut. It will fall from the 1st of July for local governments. In particular, given that one, the carbon tax will apply to off-road commercial activity from 1 July 2012. Two, the carbon tax will apply to on-road commercial activity from 1 July 2014. Three, the government's own projections show a total increase in fuel excise revenue as a result of the carbon tax package of $920 million over the first three years of operation. Four, the Minerals Council estimates that the fuel tax changes will hit 60,000 businesses in year one and will hit almost 100,000 businesses by year three. And five, the South Australian Local Government Association has confirmed in its report of financial implications of the carbon price on South Australian councils that councils will have increased off-road charges from 1 July 2012 and increased on-road charges from 1 July 2014. Therefore, the minister must attend the House and explain why he says fuel taxes are going down when, in fact, they are going up by $920 million. Madam Deputy Speaker, fuel taxes are going up under the carbon Did price, he not he down. Sorry. The minister has deceived this House the and he should have the courage Flinders to make a statement about it seat. now. The member for Flinders will resume his seat. The Leader of the House on a point of order. Speaker, yes, I seek your clarification. If it, there sit is down, an allegation— Can you sit down? The Leader of the House has the call. <laughs> The member for Hume. The Leader of the House has the call. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, I seek your clarification. 
there are specific provisions in the, stand, in the standing orders for if a, if a member has deliberately misled the parliament for it to proceed in terms of substantive motions. The, the, uh, the member for Flinders uh, is, uh, he hasn't had the courtesy of providing us with a copy of the resolution in order to uh, make a judgment as to whether we will support the suspension of standing orders or not. The Leader of the House is correct that there are other forms of the House if the member is claiming the minister has misled the parliament. I also don't have a copy of the motion before me. So it does generally it does, the order 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 I'm not disputing who or who didn't I'm just stating I don't have a copy I'm not trying to apportion blame but if there is portions of the, the motion seeking about misleading the house then there is another form to do that but the the member has the call, as there are other issues in respect of the motion he is moving. Thank you very much. I will ask him, though, if it is a suspension of standing orders, that he does refer to the actual motion before the chair. I will indeed, Madam Deputy Speaker. Thank you very much, Madam Deputy Speaker. It is urgent that this minister explains himself. He made a statement in question time yesterday which was completely at odds with the $920 million of additional fuel taxes outlined in the government's own Maifo. The member for Flinders will resume his seat. The member for Flinders will resume his seat. And it's not just about the Leader of the Opposition seeking the call, it's about me requesting people to resume their seat and people should respect that call. The Leader of the House has the call. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The, the member is now attempting to move a suspension of standing orders. He must outline to the House why the suspension of standing orders should be allowed, as opposed to the budget that is before the chamber, that is the before the chamber, of the, house the budget will of the Commonwealth of Australia. His seat. The leader of the house will resume his seat. The member for Flinders has the call and will refer to the motion before the chair. Madam Deputy Speaker, this matter is urgent, immediate and important precisely because a statement was made which was completely at odds with the budget of the Commonwealth. The reason why it is important is that yesterday the minister denied the fact that fuel excise is going up under the carbon tax, not down. He the claimed that it was Flinders going down. It is going up. His seat. The Leader of the House on a point of order. The Leader of the House. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Given the member is incapable of speaking to the suspension of standing orders, I move that he, the member be no longer heard. The question is that the member be no longer heard. All of those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. Think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. The ayes will pass to the right of the chair, the nose to the left. I appoint the members for Shortland and Chifley tell us for the ayes and the members for Barker and Parks tell us for the nose.
The result of the division is ayes 67, no 73. The question is therefore negated. The member for Dunkley has the call. Thanks, uh, Madam Acting Speaker. I second the motion. Labor's carbon tax will push up fuel costs, and we need to suspend standing orders so that we can establish just by how much those fuel prices will go up. This is extraordinarily urgent, and the reason for suspending standing orders is in one month's time, Australian businesses and consumers are faced with the world's largest carbon tax. We need to suspend standing orders so people have an understanding about how much fuel prices will go up so they can make decisions about pricing in their business. Certainty is required, and that's why we need to suspend standing orders. And why we we need to suspend standing orders is without that clarity, how will businesses be able to price their services and products? How will the households of Australia be able to manage their budgets? And how will those marauding ACCC inspectors threatening a $1.1 million fine on businesses that do the wrong thing in relation to the carbon tax the know what they can Dunkley do if we don't suspend standing orders? Get... The member for Dunkley will resume his seat. The Leader of the House on a point of order. I move that the member be no longer heard. The question is that the member be no longer heard. All of those of that opinion say aye. To the contrary, no. I think the ayes have it. Noes have it. Division required. Ring the bells for four minutes.
Lock the doors. The question is that the member be no longer heard. The ayes will pass to the right of the chairs, the noes to the left. I appoint the members for Shorten and Chipley tell us for the ayes, and the member for Barker and Parks tell us for the noes. Thank you. 
The result of the division is ayes 67, noes 73. The question is therefore negated. The time for this debate has expired. The clerk. Report from the Federation Chamber.